Hey guys, welcome to DevTeek Finance and in this video we would be covering the topic asset allocation. This video is a part of wealth management module. So I suggest you to watch other videos related to it to get a better understanding. Let's start with the introduction part. Asset allocation is the process of allocating the investable surplus across various asset classes to diversify as per investment objective. So there are various asset classes like you may invest in equity, you may invest in uh, equity or share, you may invest in debt funds, you may invest in mutual fund, you may invest your amount in provident funds or fixed deposits. So or uh, maybe in metals like gold, silver or maybe in commodities which are traded in uh, commodity ex exchanges and uh, you may invest in real estate or any startup business so these are various asset classes now you uh, if you have to do investment you must diversify your investable amount among different asset classes so that if any one particular asset class does not perform well your money your uh, money in other asset classes may be giving you returns at that period of time so that is the main benefit of diversification which is provided through asset allocation and this should be done according to your investment objective. Diversification reduces the overall risk in terms of variability of returns for a given level of expected return. A mixture of asset classes is more likely to meet the investor's expectation in terms of the amount of risk and possible returns. So what does asset allocation does? It does diversify your investable surplus and that diversify, diversification reduces your risk because risk is spread among different asset classes. So maybe if one is not performing well, there are possibility that others would be performing well. So this is how you would be managing the risk and the possibility of returns would be higher as compared to concentrating on a single asset class. Moving on to factors determining asset allocation. The first is financial goal. What do you want to achieve? You want to invest for what objective? So if that objective uh, requires a large sum of money and in, uh, and in uh, uh, shorter time period, you would be investing for higher returns. So you would be taking higher risk. So for example, if you want to uh, invest and collect amount for buying a home. So as you know, buying a home would cost you in lakhs, between 15 lakhs to crores. So that amount you need Need to, for, so to accumulate that kind of amount you need to uh, have higher investable surplus and generate a return percent of about 13 to 15 percent and that's how over a period of time between 5 to 10 years you would be able to manage that amount. So it depends on the financial goal where you want to allocate. It depends on risk profile, how much risk you are ready to take. So many people are conservative, they don't take higher risk. So people who are conservative, they usually invest in debt funds, balanced funds, fixed deposit, pension funds, uh, gold avenues. So all these schemes which would be safer on a safer side. Whereas people who are on higher side of risk taking ability, so they would be investing in equity classes, the, the share market, they would be investing in real estate. So taking a higher, uh, taking a higher risk. They would be uh, they would be classified according to the investors would be classified according to the risk profile. Then life cycle stage. So at which life cycle stage you are? Being a young uh, professional uh, who is unmarried, you would be more likely to take a risk because uh, the dependency on your uh, on your till now is very less. So your parents are not dependent on you at this stage of time and you are not having your children or wife to be dependent on you. So at this uh, life cycle stage, you are at the higher side of uh, uh, collecting a sub good surplus amount and investing in, uh, investing in equity oriented schemes to take higher risk. Whereas when you are in uh, your mid age and you are having dependents like your wife, your children, your parents, so at that time your risk we are capability gets uh, lesser and thus you be, you be a little more conservative and thus according to you at uh, which life cycle stage you are the asset allocation is done so if you are at the life cycle as I said mid age you would be more conservative and investing in debt schemes government funds which would be giving you a fixed return percent rather than taking higher risk 
well cycle stage so well cycle stage also is linked with life cycle stage so when you are young you are at the stage of wealth creation while when you are at mid age you are at the age of wealth preservation so when you are at the age of wealth creation you would be trying out more uh, options and you would be investing for higher returns whereas when you are at the age at the stage of wealth preservation you would try to protect the capital which you have built up and uh, you would try to take lesser risk and uh, generate a uh, uh, an average return of about 7 to 8% and not much than that amount of investment so uh, how much amount of investment you are having that would decide the diversification that could be done among different asset classes the tenure of investment so if you need funds about uh, one month after uh, one year after two years three years 10 years what kind of investor you are short term investor long term investor these all things would also determine where should be you should allocate assets so if the tenure is less you should uh, allocate the asset and fix the deposits or uh, the uh, sorry you should allocate the asset in money market instrument more liquid funds short term debt funds so all these would be liquid and you would be able to reap out the benefits in shorter period of time whereas if you want to invest for longer period of time for cap capital appreciation you must invest in real estate in long term equity oriented funds so all those schemes which are uh, generally held for a lock in uh, lock in period of 3 to 5 years then asset classes so what are all various asset classes it is equity debt metals real estate commodity private equity art so private equity is when you are investing in any startup business so that would be uh, you are having a huge amount of wealth accumulated and you want to invest in any startup business which could grow over the time and you could get your returns out of the profitability they would incur so that is private equity you may invest in commodities like wheat sugar which are traded on uh, multi commodity exchanges you may invest in share market you may invest in in bonds bonds and debt mutual funds so those would be debt schemes you may invest in metals like gold silver you may invest invest in real estate the commercial and residential property or land you may invest in art also art is not very common in our country but still some people invest in this and uh, these are the various asset classes which could be chosen as chosen as an investment option so let's see asset classes and their related features so coming to cash cash is generally held for meeting day to day and emergency requirements cash holds negligible value in terms of returns and hence there is minimal risk so if you are holding cash to meet your day to day expenses it's good but if you are holding to get uh, but if you are hold, holding a larger amount of cash cash that's bad because uh, that's not giving you any kind of return and just to keeping your money stagnant so money have its value when it comes to flow so it's very important to keep your money flowing in some kind of activity then there is bond bonds provide you fixed return in form of coupon or interest income so there are corporate bonds which are subject to credit risk of the issuer and government bonds that are believed to be risk free as uh, government will not default on the obligation towards its own citizen so bonds would be providing you a fixed return in form of coupon so if you want a, a, a regular income out of your investment so you must invest in bond now these bond also could categorize into corporate and government bond government bond are considered much safer so if you are risk conservative you should go for government bond if you are a, a little risk uh, if you can take higher risk you should go for corporate bonds which are a little riskier but obviously would provide you better return as compared to government bonds coming to stock so a stock represent ownership in a company stock is also referred as shares which are traded in share market so volatility is higher in this asset class than cash and bonds as an asset class we all we all know that stock market are tend to fluctuations volatility so every every time there are uh, buyers and sellers in stock market which uh, which uh, determines the price of a particular share so there is a lot a lot of fluctuations in that market so if the volatility is higher obviously the risk is in, is on higher side and thus uh, the chances of higher return is also uh, is also uh, in equity investments over here 
Real estate, real estate as an asset class presents a number of management issues, including tenancy, management, property, maintenance, and legal clearances. It suffers from liquidity risk and is impacted by economic cycles. Okay, so some of the uh, issues related to real estate investment is like you involves a lot of legal uh, clearance procedure and uh, it suffers from liquidity risk. So uh, if you are owning a land and you need to sell off, you won't be easily uh, selling off within one to two days so you need to invest time and look out for seller to sell your land off and then you would be getting the whole amount so there is liquidity problem in this real estate uh, investment but anyways if you want to invest for a longer period of time for appreciation in your capital and wealth creation real estate is the best option because that would help your help your income grow exponentially over over the uh, property appreciation in form of the property appreciation Coming to metals such as gold, so gold also provide an option of asset class for being diversification within a portfolio of asset. Gold is generally used as a hedge against inflation. It may be in form of physical gold or paper gold. So if you want to beat the inflation rate which is going on, so gold is generally, gold would generally be providing you a little higher than the inflation rate prevailing. So it's better to invest your money uh, in gold if you want to beat the inflation rate. If you don't want your money, uh, the value of your money to decrease, you invest in gold. And that's also a safer revenue. Now, if you are, uh, you're, you're not having having that risk of keeping a physical gold which could be stolen so you could also trade in paper golds and uh, you could uh, you could purchase uh, golds through those options you may invest also in gold gold related asset classes through mutual funds and all so so uh, gold asset class is also one way to diversify your uh, asset allocation Commodities, the investment can be volatile since prices are driven by demand and supply factor, world events, policy changes, inflation, currency market factors and others. It also serves as a hedge against inflation. So commodities, you could trade in commodities through uh, multi-commodity exchange. There you would be trading in commodities like sugar, wheat, uh, uh, then oil. All these commodities are traded over there. So if you want to diversify and you are good at commodities market, you need to analyze that market. It, and thus you can invest over there as well so now coming to types of asset allocation what could be the types in which you could allo allocate your assets so there are majorly four types strategic asset allocation tactical asset allocation dynamic asset allocation and model portfolios one by one we would be looking at all these four so starting with strategic asset allocation Strategic asset allocation is a long-term strategy where the choice of asset classes that will be part of investment portfolio is usually based on short-term and long-term financial goals of the investor. So with the name also, you can get the idea. It is strategic asset allocation. So you are allocating asset as as per a particular strategy as per a particular goal which you want to achieve so that goal could be shorter term or long term doesn't matter but you are building up your investment portfolio to achieve that particular financial goal so thus you are making a strategy to generate that much amount of uh, corpus which would be required for that uh, particular financial goal so it is based on a long-term strategy which you are choosing the goal is to generate the targeted return while keeping the risk in portfolio at level acceptable to investor. For example, a portfolio is strategically allocated 70% to debt and 30% to equity for a risk averse individual. So for example, if an individual is conservative or risk covered, so uh, strategically by analyzing his risk bearing capacity, 70% is allocated to debt, uh, to debt instruments which are a little, which are safer and 30% to equity which are riskier. So according to that individual, that individual goal and his risk taking capacity, the portfolio is built up. Coming to tactical asset allocation, the tactical asset allocation involves decision based on market situation to take favorable advantage invest in investment. Okay, so this asset allocation is you are trying to take advantage of the market situation. You are trying to take advantage of the uh, advantage of the fluctuations in market. Which sector is doing good? Which asset class is performing well? Where you should uh, where you should invest? Uh, so this is actually it involves an active portfolio management. So 
So you are adding value through short term adjustments and asset allocation based on the view for adjusting risk and related uh, return. It involves taking advantage of market pricing anomalies or strong market sectors. This strategy allows portfolio managers to create extra value by taking advantage of certain situations in the marketplace. So you are trying to analyze the market and you are trying to uh, look out at the benefits which market is doing well and where you should invest. So constantly you are monitoring your portfolio. In strategic what it was you were not monitoring. You set a strategy, you set a goal and you were investing according to that goal. But here you are not uh, investing according to a particular goal you are investing according to market situation so when the market is favorable which asset class is favorable you would be investing to get uh, to generate higher returns then dynamic asset allocation so dynamic asset allocation works on the basis of pre-specified model which does a mechanical rebalancing between asset classes the allocation to each asset class is not a fixed percentage but varies depending on the performance of chosen asset class variable okay so dynamic asset allocation is where you are creating a model and you are rebalancing between asset classes so you are creating a model which is best suited and then you are allocating the assets so that would be dynamic asset allocation now uh, allocating how much amount in which asset class is not fixed but you have fixed the asset class variables now dynamic asset allocation is a portfolio management strategy that frequently adjusts the mix of asset classes to suit market conditions. So it is somewhat similar to tactical asset class where we are looking at market condition. The only difference is that here you are having a built-in portfolio of yours as well, a built-in uh, model portfolio of yours and you would be investing within that portfolio. Whereas in tactical there was no such model built up, you were investing as per as totally per market situation but here is a combination of your built mod, uh, model portfolio as well as the market condition adjustments usually involve reducing positions and worst performing asset class while adding to positions and best performing assets so in this also you try to remove all the worst performing assets and you try to add on to the good performing assets so as to balance your portfolio Model portfolios. Advisors work with model portfolios or portfolios that capture a standard set of risk, return, liquidity and financial objectives. So, what, so uh, under this what happens we create various models. We create models according to certain risk level, certain return level, liquidity and financial objectives. So these model portfolios hold an indicative allocation that may be suitable for investors who fit the indicative risk profile and investment objective. So what does mutual funds do? They have created various schemes. So there are uh, uh, schemes for risk averse people. There are schemes for tax saving. There are schemes for liquid funds. There are schemes for growth funds. There are schemes like balanced funds for conservative people. So according to the risk profile, the risk taking capability, the return expected, the investment objective, there are various segmentation done and various schemes are uh, created. So this is like they are working on model portfolios because they have created various models and whenever an investor come, they try to analyze and find out in which model that investor would be suitable and thus they invest according to that model for that investor. A common approach to understanding the difference in risk and return preference of individual is to look at the life cycle of the investor and individual's pattern of earning, spending, saving and acceptance of risk have been seen to follow the life cycle stages. So if you want to uh, investigate how much risk an individual can take, what return he's expecting, it's very much important to analyze at what life cycle stage he is. What is the, the uh, amount of asset he is having, the income, the expenses. So you need to do a risk profiling and understand that investor in order to develop a portfolio in which the, he would be best suited. Okay, thank you for watching. This was all for asset allocation. I hope you liked this video. Do share my videos and subscribe to my channel, Take Finance. Thank you all.